a motorcycle, a 20 pound dumbbell, ow, a 250 pound dumbbell, I am expecting a car bubble. Those of you who have seen the car capsule, I don't like talking about brand names, but I do have a car capsule that is coming that I ordered some time ago and for some reason still has not shipped. And you guys know how it is. If you've been following me for a long time, any time that I order something, it gets screwed up. I just wanted to take a second and make it clear that I did not order this car capsule from the car capsule website. I ordered it from a third party that had it in stock in a warehouse not far from home, yet they still managed to screw it up and not ship it here in a timely manner. Talk about arriving at the last minute. Eleanor is supposed to be here tomorrow. <laughs> well, as you guys know, I've been sorting out things here in the garage, trying to make space for Eleanor and Eleanor's garage bubble. That's right, I got me a car capsule off the internet, and I expected the thing to arrive here almost two weeks ago. And I, I just can't believe it that it actually arrived just the day before I'm actually going to have the car get here. So, I mean, it couldn't have been timed any better for it to have happened just this way. I mean, it's just for it to be here. <laughs> Hopefully everything else just falls together exactly the same way. Anyways, like you like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And when we get back after the intro, we're gonna start putting this car capsule together and we're gonna see if it fits in the garage here because still some people are telling me it's not gonna work. <laughs> I guess we'll have to prove them wrong again. Thanks for watching. We'll be back right after the intro. Alright, this thing is already split open. Looks like it's a, a box on the side of a box, and that's what we got here. I'm not really worried about breaking anything because, well, it's a plastic bubble. Yeah, so there's probably going to be some kind of electronic controls or something inside of there, but I'm sure they're packed properly. And I can almost guarantee you that the thing came over from China. Made in China. Right there, it says it. So if it made it all the way over from China and didn't get itself completely destroyed, I'm sure that it's packed just fine. There it is. Car capsule showcase. It says on the packaging, do not open with sharp object. However, looking at how the box is set up here, it doesn't appear there's going to be any other way to open it other than to cut it. What do I have that's not sharp that still cuts? <laughs> We're going to use a sharp object, but I'm going to be extra delicate. This could prove to be the most expensive garbage bag that I've ever bought in my life. Oh, oh no. You could win a Visa gift card, yeah. Oh, here you go. Email a story about your car and why you choose car capsule and how it solved your storage problems. Submit a photo of your product and include your email. Oh, I'll submit it. Hey, you guys gotta see this video, right? All right. This is probably the instructions. I am somebody that reads the instructions. I don't give a crap what anybody else says or does. Do's and don'ts. For a single person setup, you want to place a loose cotton sheet or breathable car cover on the car to avoid scratches by pulling the top of the PVC over the car. That's really the only thing I don't like about this, is that when you set it up, you do have to drag it over the top of the car. Um, I suppose there's other ways I can find ways to support the bubble from the garage ceiling. But anyway, that'd be something for the future. Do leave your windows all the way or halfway down. Do leave your convertible top up. Do not place any source of heat inside the car capsule, not even a light bulb. A lot more to this here, but it appears really simple. It's an 11 step setup and I can read it in a second. Not much to it. I think I can pretty much memorize that. 
All right, I guess we gotta figure out what each one of these things is. Inside of here, I am betting that this is going to be the electronics. Yep, looks that way. We got us our fan, which people describe as a computer fan. It's a lot bigger than a computer fan, but it's very much similar to an appliance type fan. And in here, we've got, oh, there you go, a pork pie hat. Now I'm Heisenberg. Not convincing enough? <laughs> That's going to be our filter. Put that there. And I see also in here, which appears to be our AC adapter. Yep, that's exactly what it is, so nothing exciting there. All right, let's get that out of the way. We got us a tent right here. One tent. Alright, the venting is on this side. I really want it on the other end. Wish I knew where the zipper was. Oh, we found it. Oh, it's two zippers. Even better. I like that. So if I do this right, I can actually leave one side zipped. You know what I feel I should be doing? Rather than screwing around with this, fighting with the thing, trying to pull the thing taut, why don't I just fill it with air where it sits? And then when it's inflated, everything will be nice and stretched out. This is, this is kind of silly. This is going to take me more time just to pull the plastic flat. Okay, it probably doesn't help that it's about 35 degrees out here right now, so this plastic is just stiff as a board. But I'm inside the tent right now. As I was saying, I think it would just be easier if I tried to inflate this thing. So as I said in the instructions, you stick your Velcro together. It's all Velcro paste. Like it might be a little bit of a fight because there are some creases in the plastic that causes the Velcro to be wonky and not sit flat. There it goes. Now it's flat. Alright. Then there's this red thing on the bottom here. This is where your power cord is going to go through per the instructions. There it is. Plug that right in there. Hopefully they'll stay together. Yeah, it's a pretty tough friction fit. You might want to put a piece of uh, uh, electrical tape or something around just to make sure that it stays. Alright, we've got our everything here. Let's turn it all back the other way. I'm not worried about filtering the air yet at this time. Plug this in just to make sure it works. So I'm not wasting my time. There it is. Alright, it works. Let's go ahead and zip them back up. Go ahead and plug them in. There it goes. According to the instructions, it takes about seven minutes to inflate, and I see it already doing its job. If it were a lot warmer, this would be a lot easier to do. So, word of advice for anybody putting one of these together: uh, warm weather. <laughs> this thing is just stiff as a board, and it's kind of hard to uh, 
kind of hard to straighten out. It's just, it's, it's that cold right now. And I'm here in Florida, mind you guys. It wasn't uh, seven minutes, it was more like 11 minutes, but it filled up the entire space. Exactly! <laughs> so, my measurements that I made here were pretty good. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to s scoot the bubble, or scooch, as Earl says, scooch the bubble a little bit over to the, uh, what would be my left right now. And that should give me a little more walk space through here. Although, it's not impossible to walk through here. I still can do it. It's not that hard to just push the tent out of the way. And of course, over here, I've got all this debris, which I didn't throw away. But I will off-center this just a little bit in here and uh, make it fit a little better. So you know what I like about this? Uh, I have it inflated right now to the maximum size. Um, of course, I could, when I deflate it, put the motorcycle in place here, and then it will inflate up against the motorcycle without hurting anything. I mean, if I want to, I could, you know, put a blanket or something against the motorcycle. It won't hurt anything. All these creases and things that you see in this tent are all probably going to disappear when it warms up. I don't see any reason why they'd still stay here, but this plastic is very, very rigid right now. It's cold temperature. I don't feel that it's going to crack. It's not like that. It's just, uh, it's hard. It's quite hard. So over time, I imagine that will soften up. But let's go ahead and stick Eleanor's chassis in here and start putting the garage back together and see how everything looks. But inflating this thing the way that I just did seem to be the right answer for anybody that's uh, assembling one of these rather than taking all the time to drag it over the car while it's still all folded up and difficult to open up. Let the air do it. You know, let the, uh, let the fan do the job for you. Oh boy, it's just like a first date. <laughs> Gotta unzip her and find your way in. <laughs> well, now that's interesting. Whew. I feel like Bubble Boy. And my voice sounds truly interesting. Thanks for calling Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. All of our operators are currently assisting other callers. Please stand by and wait for the next available operator. <laughs> Probably in the instructions somewhere, it'll tell you you're not supposed to pull a plastic bag over your head, and technically that's what I've done. But the air does cycle through here. It does leak through the zipper all the way around because no zipper is airtight. That's the only place I could see that the air would probably escape from. Uh, everything in here is really simply designed. Uh, it has a very vinyl smell, like a brand new shower curtain. Not particularly one of my favorite smells, but it'll go away in a couple days. I see it's inflated enough that it hit the uh, power cord to the garage door opener and knocked it out. So at some point when I was bumping it, I guess it hit the cord. That cord never fit very tight anyway. Not a big fan. Oh, a little blurry in here. Come on camera, focus, there you go. There's our fan. I still have to install the filter on it per the instructions. It's supposed to get sandwiched between all that stuff. But uh, now that it's inflated, we can start doing some of these things. Really, the goal was here to uh, just get it inflated. I kind of like what it's done here. It has just like vacuum sealed, except the opposite, using high pressure instead. But it pushed all of my junk into the shelves. So. Everything that's here is not likely to fall down anyway. This is plastic fenders and stuff from a CRF 450. Those really aren't gonna hurt anything even if they did fall. Eleanor's headlights are here. And I took that swing arm down. And yeah, see that cable there? It actually broke when I touched it. So yeah, it was on its way out. And of course, the zombie baby kept her home up there, or his home. And we don't know what the zombie baby actually is. It's just a scary thing. Hey, got my YouTube running over there still. This is good. I think we'll uh, start getting things um, put in here, put the car in here. And what I think I'm also gonna do, and this is not something instruction says to do, but I'll probably take about 18 inches or so, maybe even two feet, and lap it over, and then roll the car up on that. And you might say, hey, why are you doing that? Because what it'll do is it'll decrease the footprint of this a little bit. I mean, Eleanor, from close to this edge, only comes to about here. So I have all this extra space and I really wanted to have a walk path through here. So if I can kind of 
lop some of the plastic over. I think it'll make it a little better for me to um, find my way through the garage to grab things if I wanted to, even with the bubble inflated. Otherwise, it's just it's kind of a pain in the ass. If I had a bigger garage or if I didn't have nearly as much junk, it probably wouldn't be a bad thing. And that comes to the reason as to why I got this to begin with. Everybody's telling me, hey, Duckman, you need to go ahead and build yourself another garage. Put it on the corner of your property. Go ahead and buy a shed. Why don't you go rent some space somewhere, a storage unit? Put your car in there. Why don't you build a lean-to? You know, why don't you just spend a whole ton of money on something that you're not going to keep anyway because you're going to leave this property and move into your shop later. But hey, we want to make you go backwards, Duckman. We don't want you to see your gold. We want you to have a whole bunch of junk right now on the immediate rather than seeing what it is that you truly want and need. That's what I keep getting told. Don't know why people don't listen. This bubble that you see right here is going to go with me. Even though I spent, you know, I think it was about 500 bucks for this thing. The beauty of it is, is that when I get my shop, I'm going to use it there too. There's no reason for me to invest in another shed or modifications to this property or, or do some other crap that's completely unnecessary and expensive, especially with the cost of building materials right now. I'm going to one and done. I'm going to get my shop, build it and be done with it. I'm not going to modify this property. There's not enough space on here anyway. And there's problems with zoning. And one of the things like uh, how big you can build and how close to the edge of your property, there's some things that you just can't have anymore in this county. So all the people that are telling me to, to do that stuff, sorry guys, this is what this is for and this is how Car Capsule came and they saved the day. And uh, I like this. I like this so far. Time will tell if I get truly annoyed with it being in this garage, but my time in this garage, as I said, is limited. And that's why I have this. This will get the job done and keep me safe and stop Earl from yelling at me <laughs> if something were to happen and it doesn't scratch the car now because the car is pretty well protected. Let's go outside and uh, give this thing a stress test and see how well it's gonna hold up. It's a boy! <laughs> So let's go ahead and deflate it and put Eleanor well, her chassis up inside of this thing. Alright, the old Heisenberg pork pie I had here is the filter, and it goes in on this side. It does say to do this when it's fully inflated. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference. You just kind of tuck it under the lip just like so. And the nice thing about this is it stays about 18 inches, almost 2 feet, above the ground. So all the dirt and things that are close to the ground will not be sucked into this. So the filter probably won't get all that dirty, unless you have a really dusty or dirty environment. But. That appears to work out pretty good. Well, let's open it up and let's get Eleanor in here. In the future, I imagine the best way to do this is probably to have something to tie it up to hold it up and out of the way.
Well, all right, it might seem a little lopsided, and that's actually to be expected because on the right side over here, I had to pull the bottom base up past those wheels so I could run the zipper down because the zipper is put on in the most stupid and inconvenient manner ever. It should start in a corner, some corner, any corner. Instead, it starts dead center up underneath the fan. And maybe they intend you to drag it for the length of the vehicle, but if you put it in a corner, then you could start the zipper this direction, or you could start the zipper this direction. You can drag it up and over, or you can drag it lengthwise. You could do either method. But because of the way they got it, you're limited to one method. So as far as form and function, oh, that really hurts because it was just so hard to get this thing inflated. Now, when I have the actual car in here, well, first off, it'll be a little bit further to the left. It's a little further to the, the right than it would be ordinarily. But I, I won't be able to get down there and zip the zipper on that side. So I'm going to have to redesign this thing. Um, that's highly inconvenient. Just highly inconvenient. That really bothers me. Uh, there's just, I guess, no better way. No better way based on uh, how they designed it. Otherwise, we're going to do a stress test of this thing. And let's find out exactly what can penetrate it. Eleanor's chassis is inside here right now. Of course, we're still waiting for the body, which should be here as soon as tomorrow. And uh, if everything survives and is good, then of course, Eleanor's body's gonna go in here. Oh man. Huh. Now that we've seen just how difficult the thing was to set up, which uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of cost it a few points, but hopefully the thing is much more resilient and better protective of the car that's inside of there than anything it had to deal with in the past. And. Uh, well, let's go ahead and give this thing a realistic test of uh, things that are here in my shop. Uh, just things that I have around and things that may happen to me while I am working here in the garage. This thing had a few shortcomings of uh, difficulty in getting it set up. Hopefully it'll be a much more protective and totally worth it from here on out. Well, I guess let's see. Again, realistically, these are things that might happen in my garage. A bottle cap. A flying 13 millimeter wrench. Fucking Volkswagen. A tape measure. A bottle of water. Zombie baby. Motorcycle bodywork. A sweepy broom. A CR five hundred expansion chamber. A gas can. A small loaded toolbox. A floor jack. A bar stool. A vintage snap off creeper. Delmont. An impact driver. A motorcycle. A 20 pound dumbbell. Ow! A 250 pound dumbbell. Some other heavy load. <clears throat> A duck. <laughs> Good boy, no ducks were harmed. No. A 
a Springfield 45. Uh, I wonder if they'll give me a refund on this.